So now the, the second uh, session will be uh, uh, given by Petr Nuska, who is uh, uh, our own PhD candidate here at Bern University. And uh, he's going to uh, talk about a, a really interesting topic, which is uh, the use of a film to translate research footage into a film. Uh, I think this is very, uh, it's, a, it's a very hot topic. It's, uh, it, it poses a lot of uh, issues about how it's planned or how it's done on existing material, I guess. And uh, so Petr is going to use some uh, recently shot footage from his research with Roman musicians in Slovakia. Uh, so it's uh, very exciting to have this and uh, I think the floor to, to him. Thank yeah, you. thanks for the kind introduction and uh, thank you because giving paper on Friday very evening is actually a great privilege because you know that the people here are really tough, so thanks for coming uh, to the presentation uh, titled as Ethnomusicological Film or Translating Research Footage into a Film. So let's start with the survey. I would like to ask you, uh, raise your hand if you ever used a uh, video camera in your uh, ethnomusicological research. This would include then, a smartphone, tablet and so on, and a motion picture device. Why? Quite a big crowd, right? Uh, then the second question. Who of you have ever submitted a film to a film festival? Right, there are certain discrepancies you could have seen. And it's actually interested me because um, by essence, ethnomusicology is a discipline that really produces lots of footage, lots of research footage, but not that many musicological films. And yeah, this uh, actually inspired me to, to uh, do this presentation. So the content will be uh, first, I will make a very short introduction into what is actually research footage and what is film. Then uh, I will talk about conceptual trends in contemporary um, ethnographic film practice. And then I'm, I'm going to show you some uh, audiovisual samples. And you will think about these trends uh, on, the, on the examples of, of the samples I'm going to show you. Uh, first, um, I need to apologize and make a little correction at the very beginning because uh, I titled my presentation Ethnomusicological Film and then I'm going to use the term ethnographic film throughout the presentation. So for this presentation, I consider ethnographic film about music and music culture as, as ethnomusicological film, and it is within the frame of all uh, ethnographic film. We can talk later whether it's uh, right or, or not. Uh, I have one particular reason for it, but no time to explain it. So let's jump uh, into the first point of the presentation. That is, what is research footage, and what is ethnographic film? So you can see very old definition that actually says that ethnographic film, unlike footage, is edited to create a narrative that is selected by filmmaker, producer, ethnographer, ethnomusicologist, you name it. Um, it's quite a nice definition, but it doesn't quite work in, in, in all cases. And this is the, uh, Sarah Pink's reaction on this definition. Uh, she said, well, uh, yes, but always the ethnographicness, so to speak, of any video footage is actually contextual. You can uh, sometimes shoot research footage and then involve it in an ethnographic project and then the footage becomes ethnographic. So this would be my first partial point of this presentation. Any research footage has the potential to become a film. Right. Now let's jump into the second point, that is uh, ethnographic film. Long time ago I started reading introduction into visual ethnography as a teenager and you know, reading this introductory book, I had feeling that there's some, some kind of story that looks pretty much like this. That at the very beginning, the ethnographic film was not that good, that great, was not really useful for anthropological purposes. But then, thanks to development of both technology and foremost, uh, the ideas and concepts and theories, it became much more major and much more usable for anthropology. So now, if you like follow these ideas, we should have by now a very great and proof tool of ethnomusicological or ethnographic film that we can all use in all cases. But this thing I like didn't happen yet, and therefore I actually propose to leave this theme, this narration of uh, development of ethnographic film as a genre of ethnographic uh, of the cinema, and I propose something like this. Right, there has been indeed some development at the beginning, driven by both technology and uh, theoretical concepts. However, it was not, not one line of the evolution, it was many lines. 
and I call it I will call it in this presentation trends. So there are different trends of developing um, ethnographic film, and therefore there are many uh, genres, subgenres, and way of making ethnographic film in general. So therefore, that will be my second point of this presentation. Uh, there is not a single way how to translate research footage into a film. Instead, there are many. <coughs> right, and because there are many, many trends, I'm gonna uh, talk just about four of them. First trend is uh, called, or I call it, trend towards doing ethnography. There's a nice quotation I got from, uh, from Sarah Pink. Uh, basically, what, uh, what happened to, to anthropologists at the beginning, they really like to take you know, some motion picture just for the sake of recurring thing for ex post analysis. They wanted to, I don't know, conserve some cultural diversity that was disappearing and so on. But later on, they actually realized, well, the process itself is interesting and it produced interesting ethnographic knowledge. Therefore, they were more concerned about not the final product, it was less interesting, but the, the process of uh, filmmaking itself. And yeah, I would like to show you one very short sample of, of video. So can we uh, switch the light off? And just think what you see. Think what you see. Think of the of the film expression, film form, and so on. Macho, co bude teraz? Sam nie wiem. Nie wiesz? Sam nie wiem. A to nie grał? Ład, Bude teraz panem Sandrem, nebo ne? Ty ma nahrávaš. Pravda, <laughs> Bude to s Vladom Sendrom, pravda, že? Hej, super, super. Tak doufám, že přijde teda. Určitě. Až manželka manžel, 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 to bude. Manželka taky přijde. Pravda, že? Super, super. Ty jsi se zajímavě jak dostal, prosím tě. Ty si ho normálně? Co ne? A co budeš co bude dneska hrát? Co? Já nevím, nevím, nevím vůbec. Marna, ty víš, co budete hrát dneska? Já nevím. Víte někdo teda? Ne. My jsme prostě sendrovci taky. My se setkáme a hráme. A to je to umění. Right, that was it. Uh, so we saw a little sample. I think it, it uh, really well illustrates what I'm talking about when I'm talking about um, filmmaking as trend towards doing ethnography. So what are the means of uh, film expression of, of this trend? First of all, there's wide angle, as you could have seen. Uh, you know, I could have shot these musicians from 50 meters distance. With very long lens, it would look even greater, I think. But there would not be the interaction that I think it's really typical for ethnographical work, is the interaction, to interact with your research participants. Uh, there is obviously presence of filmmaker. You can see the shadow. You can hear the voice of the filmmaker. And it, it, there's no doubt about the fact that the filmmaker is here and is sort of part of the situation. Uh, another thing is concern. It's, become part of anthropological and ethnomusicological practice to make your participants aware that they are being filmed. So why wouldn't incorporate it uh, within the film itself? And there are some other things that I could talk about as movement that I felt is actually part of uh, my ethnographic experience with Roma because they are still moving. Uh, and obviously we saw, we saw long unedited shot. So that, that's about the first, uh, first trend and how can we actually achieve it uh, within means of film expressions. Let's talk about the second trend that I call uh, towards film language. So as you know, the word ethnography itself, etymologically speaking, it's about writing culture. That means that all the time uh, the written word has been always the, the key tool in anthropology, the written word. And then when actually visual ethnography uh, like came, to, came to work, uh, the biggest challenge, or one of the greatest challenge, was not to simply put some nice visuals and narrate over some written word, but to develop its own mean of film language, of visual language, that would, that would basically substitute the written word. So now I'm going to show you uh, 
and another sample, if you can uh, put the lights off. Um, yeah, we see the same musician that, that was just introduced. And again, uh, think about the film forum, but what you what you see. Okay, sorry, everyone who's telling me. So, um, like, I wouldn't say that this is a short film. This is by no means a short film, but it uses the the means that I would like to talk about in this uh, section towards film language. That is, what are the means of film expression in in this case? So, first of all, you could have seen various types of shot. You could have seen big close up. You could see totals, and they're all edited together. So they create sort of continuity and discontinuity and uh, disruptions and so on. Uh, you, you could also see asynchronicity because it's not possible that uh, the man is singing at the same time he's wearing the cake and at the same time you know, he's doing d different things. But we accept that because we are used to film language, we know how film language work and we sort of understand this, uh, how, how this works. So an anthropologist started using this as well and uh, develop it as uh, sort of different language, different from the written language. Yeah, so that would be my point. A um, few more points about this. This is crafting the traditional film loop. You can see the shell that will feel the motion blur. I could talk hours about film loop. Uh, so it's crafting the, the look of the traditional film media. And there's focus on the character because you can't make film about everyone, you just select your character and you, you, you make film about certain people. Right, so that was the second trend. Uh, there's going to be a third trend that I call towards participation and collaboration. And yeah, again, this is a little bit complicated topic for, for making it really clear in, in one short presentation. But collaboration and anthropology, uh, you can actually rephrase this, uh, this definition here in the frame of film. So if collaborative anthropology is defined in this way, you can say that collaborative ethnographic film could be something that is co conceptualized from the beginning, that is pre-production, over the production, post-production and distribution with your research participants. The collaboration is essential, the collaboration with uh, participants. Um, I don't think we, we need uh, the light off now because it's actually a simple idea. It's more like mental exercise than a video sample. Whether it's the group, you, you remember the group that didn't know what to play? So this is how they perform.
obviously I was not able to carry out the collaborative uh, uh, or participatory uh, aspects of, of the research, like all of them. But we made a deal with musicians at the beginning. Okay, I'm gonna be observing your lives. I'm gonna be part of your lives for for a couple of months from now. And what I can do is to uh, shoot you some uh, some music videos for your YouTube channel. And they said, yes, we need that. You know, we are musicians. We make a living out of music making. So yeah, let's let's do this. And they were really keen. So this was my uh, my way of doing like participatory research. Just a quick idea. Uh, the last thing I would like to talk about is a little bit. Well, let's say. Oh, let's let's watch it first and then let's think about it. So you, yeah, you've got the idea. It's the same video. You got the idea. So this is a trend that I call towards impact and the public engagement. Uh, basically, if you like that your anthropological work will be seen by many people, you need to work in a little bit different way to be able to deliver a product that will be of interest of, of cinema distribution, TV distribution, you name it. Uh, yeah, so that was, the, that was the last trend I wanted to talk about. So the first two trends were more about like film language, while the second one were, were more about dissemination and distribution. So now, I'm almost concluding. Uh, one important point to make, and there are three disclaimers as well. I, I know that you should normally do disclaimers at the beginning, but it wouldn't make any sense to do disclaimers at the beginning, so I'll make them at, at the end. So the important point, why I was talking about this multi-dimensional evolution of ethnographic film, is basically because sometimes you need to choose the way, your way, and it's hard to do the direction that goes the opposite way. It was quite clearly seen uh, this collaboration and participation versus impact and public engagement. If your primary goal of your ethnography, or not primary goal, but if you make deal with your research participant that you be delivering product for the YouTube channel, you are very likely not to deliver something that will be screened at the Stubborn Film Festival, and vice versa. So what I, what I mean is that uh, sometimes the, the trends in contemporary visual ethnography are contradicting one another. And therefore, uh, you need to choose. And you can be sure that whatever product you will actually deliver, uh, there will always be liked by some anthropologists, ethnomusicologists, but will be disliked by another. Right. And now the three disclaimer. Disclaimer number one. I told you there are like four trends. This is by no means that there are only four. It's just another six that I uh, come up with when I was uh, doing the presentation. Uh, in the context of this conference, I think this uh, trend towards body and senses might be uh, interesting for someone uh, because there has been really a great trend of rehabilitation, observational cinema within the framework of phenomenology and sensory ethnography. So I can definitely recommend some reading if you're interested. So this was the first disclaimer. There are not only one or only four trends. There are many, many more. A second disclaimer. Uh, I told you some of my ways of doing the ethnography, the visual ethnography, to ful fulfill some of these trends. You can get inspired by them, but you can also forget about them. Oopsa! So sorry, Sam. So sorry. There was uh, some remote controller. Oh my god. Uh, so. So. Um, so you can forget about them because they are, they are not really important. You always, as, as anthropologists, you need to figure out what works best in your context. It works some. <laughs> Great. And the third disclaimer, this, this, the same thing actually concerns the distribution. I just told you, yeah, I was uh, shooting YouTube uh, videos for my research participants. Therefore, I was not able to send my film to, to uh, Sundance. But Actually, you might do much greater public engagement with a YouTube video. At the same time, you can design a research project, participate in a research project that can be screened on Sundance. That means this only works in my context, but it doesn't mean that it's going to work universally. Right. So this is the summary of some main points of my presentation. Uh, when I actually saw this, I realized, OK, I, I, was, I just made a presentation about things that everyone knows. So, yeah, anyway, I hope that you get inspired and that you actually find your way to translate your own research footage into interesting films. 
That's it. Thank for your attention. Looking forward to your questions. Thank you very much, Pat. Uh, very interesting and uh, uh, thought provoking uh, presentation. Uh, I have my own comments, but I would like some questions. Uh, well, I was interested to know to what extent you think about filmmaking in terms of a shooting script or of just taking a, a scene and developing the film as you find it. So that is much more using the, um, the camera as an investigative tool. Mm -hmm. Right. I can go here. <coughs> so I think there are actually nowadays many ways of, of doing this. And what, for example, this is actually very interesting, um, very interesting, what as you say, staging and writing script. So nowadays in documentary, it is actually also quite popular to write scripts, and uh, many Oscar winning documentaries from recent past, uh, they were actually scripted and, and played. At the same time, one of the, these arrows might be like towards photojournalism, and this basically only relies on, uh, on the fact that you, you find a scene and you shoot a certain scene. So this could be another. I mean, um, I guess my approach as, as anthropologist is to find a scene try to shoot it as it is, but at the same time to admit my presence. That was my way and my positioning within all these, uh, within, within all these trends. Um, did I answer your question? Not really. <laughs> so, yeah, what was your question? <laughs> well, do you plan in advance or you just use ah, the camera as a shooting script? Yeah. Ah, you have a shopping list of shots before you go out. So no. Do you know in advance ah, what sorry. it is that you want to get? Sorry, I got it now. Sorry, yeah. sorry for not understanding. So, um, yeah, no, it doesn't work with uh, with Romani musicians because they are ever. They don't know what they play. <laughs> they, they, exactly. Uh, okay, I'll tell you. Uh, if, if you give me one minute, I, I tell you the story of this uh, this last show. Uh, I was called by this Vladimir Sandre, this this musician. Hey, you could uh, you could actually make a clip for us. We're we'll going to be playing at this uh, great Romani festival. We are playing half past two. Would, would you be there and, and shoot us? I said, of course. I went and they said, uh, no worries, it's, it's, it was postponed till half past five. Okay, no worries, I have like four hours. At half past five, I saw some of them, all of them already like uh, had some, some alcohol. I said, oh, you know, we, we are not likely to play. Maybe after this group, but it's even likely that we won't play at all. So I said, okay. Finally, they played like 11 p.m. And it was the moment when I was leaving the festival and I uh, bumped, randomly bumped into the violinist. And he said, and I actually said, uh, do you know whether you'll be playing tonight? Yeah, we are playing right now. <laughs> so, uh, that's not how, how I showed it. So there, there would be no, no way actually to, to script any of these, what, what you just see. It's uh, yeah, pure improvisation. I needed to adapt it to yeah, improvise life of, of robots. Yeah, but the point is that you don't have in advance the concept of what the film yeah. is going to be. Yes, yeah. I do. Yeah. I think my thought was second hand. Yeah, I think it, um, it touches upon, it touches in the same, it goes in the same direction. Um, you're talking about um, translating research footage into film language. And I wonder how much, how much film language uh, there is already present in your research footage because when I think of my research footage, for example, I, I've, when I document a concert situation like this, I've never walked on the stage and talked to the people. And you said um, interaction is typical for feet work. I guess it is in expo in, in explorative context, but maybe not so much in certain documentary contexts. So I'm, and, and also the situation you talked about uh, consent, and, and you could see that um, the musician is just asking, are you recording me? And you answering, yes. So also very specific um, ideas of consent, I would say. And my question would be, if um, your uh, approach to, um, to documenting is actually, in the end, then very much informed by people in which because it seems to me that 
there would be a lot of research footage that looks very different and that might not be that easily be translatable in what you might then send uh, to Sundance or to YouTube. Yep. Yeah, I guess. Um, um, yeah, I guess it's all here. Like um, you basically, you never find a way how to fulfill all these trends to to you know, fulfill everyone's expectation. First point, and the second point is you always need to find your way of doing things, your way that that fit fit best to the ethnography. No, because I, I think it's it's a legitimate way. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's might be not, sure. might be not. That's no, I mean it's for sure uh, practically if you want to do a film, but. Um, but, but what, because I, I find your title very in, inspiring, translating research footage. That's why you came and you are disappointed now, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I think there's a lot of research footage that, you know, is shaky, uh, maybe, I don't know, you know, what of these um, aspects of quality of the documentary. Mm. Right. Yeah, I, I would still, I would still, uh, like insist on the first point that I was making that any research footage can be translated into a film because I've seen uh, I was at the uh, Russian uh, of, of documentary film festival or ethnographic film festival and there was one of the greatest ethnographic films that I've ever seen but it was shot on, on video camera it was very shaky even the, the di director herself she said I'm not really good with camera and despite of that there was a great story in it so you know, the fact is that, that she she went there with an intention to make a film. That, that's that's quite true. But it, I don't think that the film is made by um, you know technical quality. Like yeah, if you if you want to send your film to Sundance, they wouldn't probably accept. You know, um, though it's not true. About, also, like from Sonita, I think it won Sundance in 2015 or 16, and it's all shot with one hand cam, very shaky footage. But there's great story in it. So I think technical quality shouldn't be an obstacle to deliver a uh, good film. Yeah. But maybe mm -hmm. that ethical questions and the respect of the people we record can be an obstacle. Because if they ask you not to create a film, not to show to anybody what you are recording just for your research, that they allow you to research to film, then you cannot make a film of that. Absolutely, yeah. We'll both for our hands. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is not true. <laughs> what is not true? That any research footage has a right. potential to yeah, become right. a film. Yeah, this is, this is over Even because you know also in advance, you are allowed it to record, but you know in advance that no way you are going to make a film. So there is no potential. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a very good point. And, and I take it, uh, obviously, um, you should somewhat have like clear intention what you're going to do with footage and tell your participants it shouldn't happen that you, you just shoot them and then submit their faces to Sundance and then want some prize and then tell them, I want the prize. So yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Yeah. So, uh, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, I was wondering, uh, when you refer that there's, you, you, you totally improvise and there's no actually, there's no strategy. I mean, when you edit, I did. At the stage of editing, uh, of putting things together, there is necessarily a story that is told there. So whether it is a linear or a, a cyclical, <laughs> a multi-dimensional, multi-directional, whatever, an open-ended, an experimental. Um, but there is a story to be told, especially if you are talking about technology. So. The, so, because film is, of course, an invention. Okay, it is a representation of uh, what's going on in the field. Uh, so, how did you cope with this uh, the editing process as a process of creating a narrative? Yeah. Yeah, uh, great question. I basically, this was just 24th of August. And shortly after that, I, I came to the UK, so I have a bunch of material that I didn't even see, so I didn't have time to see it. So I'm at the very beginning of the of the shooting, of, of the editing process. That is, to start seeing footage, what I, what I actually shot, and I will try to find some narrative. And you are right. Um, I don't know what who told me that, but uh, basically, doing docu documentary is done in, in uh, you know editing room. You, no one is that good that they just like take camera and make film and, and this is in the camera. So download it, it's done. 
um, documentary filmmaking always involves editing as part of um, exactly the process of uh, creating and developing narrative. So, yeah, to answer your question, I, did, I didn't start it and uh, I, I, I'm actually kind of looking forward to, to look at the footage, whether there's some narrative and what it will be like. I have some ideas, but uh, yeah, too early to really say what, what the final film is going to be about and whether there is going to be a film or several shorts. I don't know. It's, um, I don't know. Yeah. Well, thanks for the question. It's a good question. Yeah, just one, just one quick question. You spoke only of four friends and and methodologically speaking, I, I, I know a bunch of people who are doing um, film research, uh, ethnographic film research by giving the cameras to the, the actors to the, of, the, of the field. Mm -hmm. So they don't control the filming at all. They just, they just leave it to them. And I, well, I'm not sure at, at that point, at, at that in the editing process, how much do they influence and how much do they modify this these footages, but I was wondering if you, if you did something like that or if you're planning to do something like that. Right, so uh, again, great question. Uh, it's another trend which is not even here, but it's trend like towards, oh, it was actually mentioned the trend towards participatory. There's even like method that is called participatory video. That is exactly, you give the camera to research participants and they do things with it. It's actually quite old. It's been used in 68, I think, by Solworth at uh, Navajo, in, in the Navajo context, so 50 years old already. And by that time, it was not really easy to give someone a camera because you needed to have quite good knowledge nowadays. Everyone can shoot everything. Uh, that's, that's true by, you know, thanks to development of technology. Uh, so, and I just like, I will answer a question, but I just like made a little point about it. There are like two points about uh, this participatory video and participatory footage. One is, Empowerment and second is representation. The empowerment is that to teach people how to use visual media to promote themselves. But the second is uh, representation, uh, which is to to let participants decide how they want to be represented. And that that was more what I was doing because if I gave them the camera, they would probably say, "I don't know what to do with it. Just shoot me and, and send me the video." You know, so in, in their context, it wouldn't make sense that just in the context of these musicians, musicians particularly, it might work in different contexts. Uh, so, and I'm not talking about cameras, I'm talking about filming with phones. Everyone can use phones, so you don't, you, you don't yeah. empower people by teaching them how to, how to shoot with a camera. No one is using a camera anymore. Right, yeah. So what's the point of empowering people with cameras? No yeah. one uses cameras. Fair but but, but the, the other point is true. But you don't need a camera to do that. They can do that by themselves. You just ask them to give you the, the, the movie after they shoot it. If you ask them expressively to the film for five minutes, go yeah. around and film whatever you do. Yeah. And do you do that or not? Yeah, I don't. It wasn't my not, not my attitude. Um, but I think yeah, I like I hope I justify somewhat my, my research methodology and why you use that and not uh, this uh, the the other. I, I'm sorry that I didn't have much time to speak about my project and about the, the aims and goals of my project, but uh, it just like, it wouldn't contribute to, say, my research question, to, to what I was really up to. Yeah. But it's a very popular trend as well. It would definitely become to one of the most influential trends nowadays to exactly empowerment and, uh, and representation. Uh, at the same time, I, um, I think with this, my participatory aspect of, of uh, ethnography, there was certain like, for example, ethno-aesthetical dialogue with them, which was really interesting because once I, you know, brought the footage, I showed them, I said, oh, this is bullshit. We play, oh, this is, no, this doesn't look good. This is, uh, this is stupid. And learn really much out of it, you know. So um, it did give me some like uh, beautiful insights into my ethnography, but I didn't uh, give them the cameras. But thanks for the question. Sweet. The bells reminded us that it's late. Yeah. <laughs> question, please. Um, so I really like how you're theorizing this. Um, and I'm wondering whether you can talk a little bit more about um, film and the footage that you make as maybe being able to teach ethnomusicology. So I'm thinking about like engaging with ethnomusicological theory, whether fit this footage that you make can actually be used to teach um, the processes of how music is connected to social life, rather than just giving like a kind of specific idea about how uh, one community makes their music, you know, kind of, uh, 
to teach more about these general processes of the nature of music and how it's connected to sociality. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, so I, I will have to tell what is the, the aim of my research or the, the main oh, research. That's going to be very quick. That's to be very quick. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll uh, probably, uh, like, uh, I, think, I think yes. Like, uh, the short answer would be yes, I think. And I will then tell you what, what's my research about how, how actually, you know, how the way I created the film corresponds to, to, you know, exactly these general processes and, and music making and music objects in general. Well, I, I'm not allowed to tell you, I'm sorry. sorry. Okay, I'll catch you another time. Well, uh, yeah. Thanks again, Pat, uh, and thank you everyone for